best comment of of um, good comment for me. So I'm gonna say I appreciate that. And uh, again, uh, I thank you um, for tuning in, and I will keep you updated um, on these things uh, as we move forward. Okay, thank you.
Monday, October 18, calling to order Finance Committee. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Here. Present. Present. Here. Present. Present. Here. Thank you. Uh, we are going to go in our normal order of lightest to heaviest legislation. Uh, please be aware that um, we are going to uh, hang on to resolution 892 until next week for further discussion internally. And so we're going to, Madam Clerk, we're going to hold resolution 892. And I'm going to Chairman, be, uh, on that, if uh, we yes, Councilman Casey, if we have um, recommendations for change to the do we have to, can we wait till next week to do that or we can, am yeah, can, we can, can amend we am it. Can, we can amend it next week? As amended. As amended. And then read it on second So we don't have to do it today then? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to begin with community development uh, and ordinance number 841 2021. Council members Conwell, Frank Italian Kelly by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the commissioner of purchase and supplies to sell city owned property no longer needed for public use, located at 10700 Churchill to an RP group LLC or its designee for the purpose of, of implementing the future Churchill Gateway project and authorizing retaining and authorizing retaining an easement and entering into an easement agreement for public purpose of vehicular and pedestrian access. Mr. Green, how are you? Okay, Mr. Chairman. All uh, right. Good afternoon. Am I able to? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, good good morning. Excuse me. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman <laughs> and members of the committee. Uh, this is a piece uh, request by the department to to um, sell land to the NRP group for the Churchill Gateway site. It's the former site of the Harry Davis School. Uh, your handouts will show the uh, number of parcels involved. Uh, there were about 34 parcels on the, uh, at the onset of this. We've since consolidated those parcels, divided them into, and split them into three parts. This uh, request is for parcel A, which comprises about 12 parcels that would allow NRP to erect the first um, part of the development, as well as uh, uh, build a road through the site to help shorten the uh, extremely long block and create a more walkable neighborhood, and they would then do an easement back to the city. So with that, I have Scott Skinner from the NRP group who, who will uh, provide a quick presentation on this project. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner. Thank you, Cha uh, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the council. So I just wanted to provide a, a little bit of context for this project. Um, this, uh, this project is a partnership between the NRP group and, and university hospitals, really similar to the work that we're doing in the Clark Fulton neighborhood uh, with Metro Health. Speak up a little, bit. little closer. Thank you. Um, and in the Slavic Village neighborhood with the University Settlement. Um, so the, the first image you see on your slide deck here is just some contextual uh, location information for where the site is. About a mile and a half south, uh, excuse me, north of University Hospitals in the Glenville neighborhood at the corner of East 105th and Churchill. Uh, the next page shows the site in its current state. Uh, this is the Harry E. Davis School. It was built in, I believe, the late 60s, early 70s. has been vacant for over a decade. Um, it's been fallen into a lot of disrepair. Uh, we initially looked at trying to salvage a school in some capacity, but the amount of asbestos that exists in the building and the disrepair of the building itself meant that we had to demolish it. Um, we've been working with Commissioner Green and with the city to, for the actual asbestos abatement and demolition <coughs> of this building. Um, the demolition is set to, take to, to begin in the next two weeks. The next image you see is just the contextual site plan. Uh, you can see the, the parcels and how they've been broken up here as Commissioner Green was speaking to. Uh, what you're looking at, our, uh, our first phase of this project is one 52 unit building, uh, four stories of one, two, and three bedroom apartments. Uh, on the first floor, there's about 3,000 square feet that University Hospitals is going to occupy for, for community programming, uh, programming that addresses infant mortality, programming that, that addresses senior isolation and other social determinants of health. Um, you'll also see, to Commissioner Green, Green's point, a roadway that is connecting Orville and Churchill that is meant to both break up the block uh, and to set the stage for future phases of development. The next page that you see is a technical uh, site plan, and you'll see immediately north of the building uh, that, that we're constructing this first phase uh, is another uh, 1.3 acres that we're, we are planning on for a second phase of development. And to the, uh, to, to, to the right of the roadway is a potential third phase uh, of development as well. 
And then the last image I want to show you is the last page, which is just a project rendering um, of the space that University Hospitals is going to occupy. Um, as you're going down East 105th, which is to the, to, to the left of this image here, you'll actually be able to see the Opportunity Center. It's about a 20-foot walk from the closest bus stop on East 105th. Uh, University Hospitals is going to be occupying this uh, six days a week. They have dedicated staff to make sure that the area is programmed. Uh, and they'll also have a food pantry and demonstration kitchen uh, in the building that's meant to facilitate healthy, healthy cooking demonstrations. Um, so this is a project that NRP is very excited about, the University Hospitals is very excited about, uh, and we've been very grateful for the support of Commissioner Green uh, and Councilman Conwell. Okay. Thank you. And ordinance number 841-2021 has been heard and recommended for passage by Development Planning Sustainability. Uh, Chairman Brancatelli. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, fully supports this legislation, gave a thorough review, uh, and the committee passed it. Thank you very much. Uh, the local council person is Councilman Kevin Conwell. Yeah, ex uh, my colleagues to support this, uh, this project. Uh, matter of fact, NRP, they've talked with the community, the residents, the block clubs. Matter of fact, I think um, we have a meeting with the block club, uh, Neighbors to Neighbors Wednesday. Correct. Right, right, right. So they know your name. <laughs> they, know, they know the project. And we're very, very happy. We're very, very excited. It's right around the corner from Glen Village. Uh, Mr. President, I showed you the project mm -hmm. before, Scott, before Scott even started um, narrating on the project. So I ask for my colleagues to approve this. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Brian Mooney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just so I understand this, Mr. So Chair, so this development's going to be on, from looking at the diagram, parcel A? Correct. And then what's going to be on parcel B? Uh, so immediately, uh, we have no firm plans for parcel B. It's for additional phases of development. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at going in for additional uh, financing, potentially early next year, uh, but that's still uh, something that we're, that, that we're working on. So it just, this, just so I understand, the whole school is going to be leveled? Correct. Okay, so then B and C will be basically vacant property. Exactly. And we're, we're retaining this right of a way just to have sort of like a street to break it up to access see and almost like a little street between is that the purpose yeah so it's a it, it serves a couple of purposes so it, it's a point of ingress egress uh, for residents and for for visitors of the opportunity center here it also to your point does break up the street this is a really long block uh, from east 110th to east 105th uh, it's just a, a, a lot of a, a lot of roadway without any break so this is meant to be a, a cut through so it will be a private road but there'll be a permanent public access easement so uh, pedestrian vehicular uh, bicycle uh, will, will allow for everything. It's meant to be a cut through from Orville to Churchill. Oh, so it's not going to be a public street. It's a public easement. Right. It's going to be a private driveway with us to have an easement if we need to access it to get to the other parcels. Correct. A permanent public easement, yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, further questions and comments on 841-2021? Uh, we just, uh, Councilman Conwell, I don't, want to, I don't want to speak for you, but uh, I know that when projects happen, you know, you're very interested in who's working on the project. Have you had those <laughs> conversations? Yes, yes, yes. My question is to you, Mr. President. Talk with Scott about uh, having African Americans to um, to work on the project, and they'll probably reiterate uh, their issues and concerns. Yeah. Wednesday night. Right. Uh, correct, Councilman. Um, again, just like the work that we've been doing in Slavic Village uh, and, in, and in Clark Fulton, uh, we're going to be setting goals for ourselves for MBEWB hiring as, as well as conducting um, uh, subcontract, subcontractor open houses for any one of the neighborhood, uh, anyone in the community who is interested in bidding on the project where we will actually walk through what the steps of bidding are, what the timing is, uh, just to make sure that everyone's on an equal playing field and, and, and has the opportunity and access to bid on the work. Right, so there'll be uh, community benefits agreements of our norm? We have not discussed a community benefits agreement. It's something that we're open to, but it's not something that we have in place currently. Okay, and then I, I'm assuming that yeah. with the conversation we've had, you've talked to Black Contractors Association and others for the, for the sub bidding, for the bidding on the project. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Great, and we'll discuss that um, Wednesday night with the um, CDC. Oh, okay. correct. The Foundation, we'll discuss it with them, and I'll Perfect. stay out of the room, and I'll just review it. Perfect. Great. Further questions, comments from 841? Hearing none, ordinance number 841 2021 stands approved. Thank you. Scott, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Commissioner, next time let's not speak as much. And yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah, we got a meeting to run here. Uh, moving to economic development, and we have 
Ordinance number 557-2021, Councilmember Spencer Brankatelli and Kelly by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizing Director of Economic Development to enter into a tax increment financing agreement with 5506 Detroit LLC and or its designee to fund eligible project costs or projected debt or projected debt for the financing of the Waverly and Oak Apartments located at 5506 Detroit Avenue to provide for payments to the Cleveland Metropolitan School District and to declare certain, certain improvements to real property to be a public purpose. Welcome. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Um, this piece of legislation is requesting the Director of Economic Development to enter into a TIF agreement with Waverly and Oak Project LLC the project is located at 5506 Detroit Avenue. Um, Waverly and Oak Project is proposing a mixed-use development, which will include the development of approximately 126 market-rate apartments, 17,300 square feet of retail space with below-grade and surface parking. As part of the TIF, the city will forgo an estimated $334,925 in tax revenue over the 30-year <coughs> duration of the TIF, and the net proceeds to the developer are estimated at approximately $1.378 um, million. There will be a creation of approximately four full-time jobs at the site with approximately $91,556 in um, new revenue approximately this would development is approximately 47 million dollar investment chapter 187 188 and 189 will apply as well as a workforce <coughs> development agreement and a community be benefits agreement right thank you and ordinance number 557 has previously been heard and recommended for passage by committee on development planning sustainability chairman brancatelli on 557. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, fully reviewed and the uh, uh, committee passed it and fully support this moving forward. Thank you. Is uh, local councilwoman Jenny Spencer with us? I, have you spoken with Councilwoman Spencer? Yes, she, um, we received this letter of support. Of support. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Further questions, comments on ordinance number 557 2021? Mr. Chairman. Councilman? Mr. Chairman, to the assistant, assistant director. Assistant director. Who's acting. the acting acting, acting, acting director? Acting, acting director. director. Sorry about that. Uh, who is the developer of this? Who, who's um, receiving the TIF? Mr. Chairman, to Councilman uh, Brian Casey, uh, Mr. Waverly and Oak Group. They are part of the Bond Street Group. It's um, three individuals that have over approximately um, 20 years of experience in construction and development. And Mr. Chairman, to the acting director, do, we, do you know the names of those individuals, who they are? Um, yes, it's um, Justin um, Trizzi, um, another guy by the name of Terry Hawkins, and I cannot recall the other individual, but I can get that information to you. All right, Mr. Chairman, to the, to the acting director, do they own, have they done any other projects in the city of Cleveland? Um, no, they have not. This, this is, is their this is first, first development one? project in the city. All right, and then Mr. Chairman, to the acting director, um, what is the property, the, the land value currently um, valued at? And do you know what the tax dollar is on it? Yes, yeah, so it's currently valued at, I have that information. So the current value of all of the parcels is approximately um, $363,900. Yes. All right. And then, Mr. Chairman, to the Acting Director, do you know what the value would be once the project is completed? Um, no, I do not have that information. We have not received the appraisal as of yet. <coughs> all right. And then my last question, Mr. Chairman, to the Acting Director, would this project go forward if it weren't for the TIF? Um, no. It would not? No, it Which would is not. Which par course. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Further questions, comments on ordinance number 557-2021? Seeing none, ordinance number 557-2021 stands approved. 
Next, we have ordinance number 540, 2021, council members Griffin, Brancatelli, and Kelly by departmental request, an emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Economic Development to enter into a loan agreement with Fairfax, Renova, Re, excuse me, Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation or its designee <coughs> to provide economic development assistance to partially finance the development of residential building located on the west side of East 105th Street and Frank Avenue in connection with the Innovation Square project and other associated costs necessary to redevelop the property. Director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this piece of legislation is requesting the Director of Economic Development to enter into a $1.3 million loan agreement with Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation to assist with their planned construction project, which would be located on the southwestern intersection of Cedar Avenue and East 105th Street in the Fairfax neighborhood. This parcel is made up approximately 20 parcels that is currently owned by the city of Cleveland and Fairfax. It will also be a part of the development of the Opportunity Corridor, the Innovation Square, the New Economy neighborhood around East 105th and the Fairfax neighborhood. This project is actually a collaborative effort with Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation and McCormick Barron, which is a development group headquartered in St. Louis um, who develop residential projects located in the city. The project will consist of approximately 80 units, 56, which is 70% of those units will be market rate, and 24 units at 30% will be workforce housing with each priced at 70, 80, and 95% of AMI. There will be 20 studios, 44 one-bedrooms, and 16 two-bedrooms. Along with the development of the Myers Grocery Store, this will be the first attempt to, to develop market rate and workforce housing at a scale outside of downtown Cleveland University Circle and the near west side. Um, the term for the loan would be 30 years. The interest rate would be 0% for years 1 through 10, 3% for years 11 through 30. Amortization would be 15 years starting in year 16. The city will share subordinated position with the foundations. Um, and the community benefits, chapter 187, 188, and prevailing wage will be applicable. Okay, thank you. And this has previously had a hearing with Development Planning Sustainability, uh, Chairman Brancatelli, on ordinance number 840, 2021. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Very exciting project, um, and this was previously heard and supported. Thank you. And this uh, project will take place in Ward 6. I'd like to hear from the local council person, Majority Leader Blaine Griffin. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I'm asking my colleagues to support this. This is uh, critical to uh, what we're trying to do in that uh, corridor around workforce housing. Just to give you a couple of um, things to make you aware of is that um, the cost for construction went up significantly, which made um, some of this project go up a little bit. Therefore, uh, we had to spend an enormous amount of time going back to some of the other partners and really increasing their share of um, investment into this project. So we were able to get the Cleveland Clinic to actually increase their, uh, from their original contribution from six million to approximately 10 million. We were able to get the foundations to come in at a, at a higher rate and deal with that. Uh, a lot of work went into negotiating this, I mean literally, probably about the last four years. So this is one of the final linchpins in order for us to get the financing that we need in order to move this project and put shovels in the dirt by the end of this year. This is important for the area because this is the first time that we have lower workforce rents and lo lower rents for work for housing, which means that we will now have a project where uh, phlebotomists, nurses, as well as environmental techs and others will be able to live and work in the community um, at the Cleveland Clinic. So this is really, really critical. Last, uh, last thing I will say is that the developers have actually cut the cost that they would receive in order to make this project work. So a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices in order to make this project work, and I ask my colleagues to support it. Great. Thank you, Councilman. Further questions, comments sure. on 840-2021? Councilman? Councilman Cormack and then Councilman Casey. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to comment. Um, this is uh, quite far east away from my ward, but I've been following this project and I want to congratulate uh, the director and Councilman Griffin. Uh, really, really exciting project. It looks really well designed. The grocery element's really exciting too. So not in Ward 3, but as a City of Cleveland resident, just want to congratulate this really exciting project and fully support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Brian Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, is the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation, are they local? Are, are they lo local developers? Mr. Chairman, on that point? Co Councilman. Yeah. They are Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation is the CDC that services that area. All right, that's what I was asking. I, I, it's no surprise, Mr. Chairman, that you know I'm usually not a big fan or proponent of TIFs or, or giving developers loans, but I can tell you in this case here, I'm so overly impressed with Section 8. And I don't believe that uh, I've ever seen a section like this in um, any of the TIFs or loans that we've given out. And if I could just take a, a quick second just to read it, it says the contract authorized in this legislation will require the recipients of financial assistance to work with and or cause their tenants to work with Ohio Means Jobs, Cuyahoga County, and the City of Cleveland to identify and solicit qualified candidates for job opportunities related to the city's contracts and place special emphasis on the hard to employ, including but not limited to the disabled and persons who've been convicted of or have pled guilty to a criminal offense unless the criminal conviction or related circumstances related to the duties of the particular job sought. I give uh, Fairfax Renaissance, uh, Renaissance Development credit for adding that into the actual legislation because this is truly what it means to be a community project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman. Anything further on 840-2021? Hearing no other questions, comments. Ordinance number 840-2021 stands approved. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, moving now to public safety. We have ordinance number 767-2021. Council members Griffin and Kelly by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorized Director of Public State is with us. Anybody? Uh, we can go to Public Works, if nobody's here. We have a countdown. Five, four, three, two. What's that? She's on her way. Yeah. Three. Okay. Going back to ordinance number 767-2021, Council Members Griffin and Kelly by department request. Emergency ordinance authorizing Director of Public Safety to renew lease agreement number LS 2018-24 with Cuyahoga County for the lease of certain space located on various floors of the Justice Center for a term of one year beginning October 2nd, 2021. Deputy Chief, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. <coughs> So we're here today, we'd like to extend our lease for the third and final year of this particular lease from October of 2021 to October 1st of 2022. Our lease rate will go up to $16 per hour. We are presently still working, we're working on our headquarters building along with uh, several other buildings to move out of the Justice Center and into, into our new building and the uh, adjacency buildings, or I should say, I can't think of the word but um, several other buildings that will house other department units of our uh, division. We have not, we're not moving or releasing any space for this contract or this year's lease. So we'll, we'll be maintain at the Justice Center what we have there right now. So we're gonna do what we're doing currently for another year. Correct. Under the exact same terms. Yes, we'll know it goes up $2 a square foot. Okay. And that's per the lease. Thank you. Commissioner, anything further? Um, it's just uh, just to say that, um, so this is 1300 Ontario Street, uh, the Justice Center, and, um, and uh, the <coughs> lease started in 2018, and this is our final year, as, as Deputy Chief mentioned. Great. Thank you. Uh, this has been heard and recommended for passage by the Committee on Safety. I'd like to hear from the Chairman, Majority Leader Blaine Griffin, please. Thank you. 
Uh, yes, this has been uh, heard and vetted from the safety committee. We had a very spirited discussion around this, and um, uh, it did pass out of committee. Thank you. Further questions, comments on seven, Mr. six, Chairman. seven, Councilman Mike Polensic. Mr. Chairman, um, there was just one question I, I failed to um, get from at the safety committee. Who is negotiating, Mr. Chairman, to, uh, to our team? Who's negotiating on behalf of the county on this? Do we know? Uh, through the chairman of the councilman. So currently it is Michael Deaver, who is the director of public works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and then on our behalf, who's negotiating? Uh, currently it's myself. It's yourself. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and I guess my, Mr. Chairman, I, my only concern is this, um, and I know, I know, um, Mike Deaver, he's a good employee and, I'm sure he's representing the county to the best of his ability. Um, but it seems after reading um, what went on during the whole um, Ken Mills um, court case and ultimately conviction, um, how the county was trying to extract uh, monies out of the cities, the municipalities who were paying for prisoners. Uh, for the county to house our prisoners. And it became very clear that they were looking upon this as a money-making proposition. And I just want to make sure that our county counterparts <laughs> understand um, that we're in partnership here, that this is not about a money-making deal. You know, we, we, are, we have to have a place to house our justice center, our police mm -hmm. command staff. And I, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're paying another $2 per square foot, correct? Yes, sir. For a grand total of how much? Uh, so this, uh, through the chairman of the councilman, so this, this year coming up will be $2,108,652 okay. for, that, for that year. I, I guess I just want assurances from who, whoever in our administration that this is not becoming a cash cow for the county. That, that they're looking out for their costs. I'm not expecting them to underwrite anything. But at the same time, um, I, don't wanna, I don't want the city to be taken advantage of because they know we're in a very difficult situation here. We don't have a place to move to. So I hope mm -hmm. that um, on our behalf, uh, Mr. DeRosa, that you play hardball too. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, Councilman. You. Uh, Councilman Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With all due respect to Mr. Polensic, or Councilman Polensic, I'll be a little bit more harsh. I think the city is getting bamboozled in this, uh, in this deal. Mr. Chairman, to, to Commissioner DeRosa, when did we sign this deal? 2000. Uh, through the Chairman of the Councilman, 2018 is when the lease started. That means in 2018, we sold our portion of the Justice Center that we own for, I think it was 9.2 million? Uh, yep, exactly. All right, for 9.2 million in 2018, and now we're going on to our fourth year of the lease, fifth year of the lease. Fourth, fourth right? Four, two, fourth, fourth, fourth year of the lease, and it's uh, is this the last option to renew? Through the this chairman, the, the councilman, one? yes. Okay, and how much have we paid since 2018 for rent? Uh, through the chairman, the councilman, I don't have that total number here. I can get it for you. Um, the lease rate started at, at $10 a square foot, and it increased. The lease that we signed increased $2 per year. Per every year. Um, so $10, 12 14 and now $16 per year and per then, square foot. Mr. Chairman, to, to, to Commissioner DeRosa, I remember the hearings and the negotiations and the contracts, and this council was assured um, by the administration that we would be out before we were done with this lease and we're one year away from this lease being over and we've eaten up by the time this this uh, lease this year is up we've eaten into the 9.2 million dollars that we've paid there or that we received in the selling of the Justice Center so by the end of this lease we're almost zeroed out with no gain and no place to go because mr. chairman and Commissioner DeRosa we don't even have the property in place yet purchased to build the new justice center or new police headquarters. Well, so this, puts, this puts everybody, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll give you a chance, Jamie. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, to the commissioner, this really puts us 
in a bind. And we're going to say it now because in one year from now, you're going to be coming back to us saying that the county wants X amount of dollars again. And we're going to have no place to go. And we're going to have a county that won't negotiate with us. And you're going to have a council who's going to be put on, you know, on Front Street saying, our, we're, what do we do with our police headquarters? Where are we going to put them? When in 2018, we were told that we were going to have a new police headquarters by now. And we weren't going to have to get to the end of this lease. So, Mr. Chairman, to, to Commissioner DeRosa, do you want to update us on the lack of progress for a new police headquarters? Um, through the chairman of the councilman, sure. Um, I'm, I'm not on the, the team that's putting the new police head headquarters together, but we are several, several years out from having folks move out of, out of the Justice Center into the new police headquarters. Um, so you're right, we are going to be coming back to City Council next year to say that we have a new lease to propose. Um, and, and as um, you know, each, each of you have said, we're in a tough position. We don't have a place to move our, our folks currently. We are working on a portfolio of properties um, that would allow us to um, move pieces of folks out of the Justice Center into these facilities. Um, if the new lease is drafted the way the current, current one is, we have the ability to reduce our footprint um, and, and thereby uh, reduce the amount of rent that we pay at, at any time to the county. Typically, we do that accounting on a quarterly basis. Um, this particular year, there was no reduction. Um, but you will have um, several pieces coming before you. One is already South High School, which would be used for the training academy, but there's also extra space in that building that could be um, used to take people out of the Justice Center, even on a temporary basis to reduce our cost that we would be paying the county. Um, the other is uh, 1825 Lakeside, which eventually will be um, before City Council um, this, this fall yet, but eventually will allow us to remove move all the evidence out of the Justice Center, which if you think about um, just the $16 a square foot for warehouse space, you know, that doesn't make a lot of sense. We also have to think about moving um, multiple moves of a, a massive amount of, of materials and, and evidence um, and keeping the chain of title. So you have to balance the cost of that move with the cost of, you know, keeping it at the $16 per square foot. Um, but you're right, we're in a tough position. We continue to no negotiate with the county. Um, and I, the only thing I would add to your earlier statement is that my understanding is that by merging the jail facilities, which is really what the impetus of selling the Justice Center was, that we save $10 million per year. So we do have that savings on an ongoing basis, um, even though, as you mentioned, we're eating into the, the sale price with our ongoing lease. Well, Mr. Chairman, the Commissioner, you can still put a lipstick on a pig and it's still a pig. So we can try to say that it looks as good as it is with saving on the jail and all that other stuff. But the bottom line is, is that we should have had at least, we should be much further along in building of a police headquarters than we are. That's what it basically comes down to. So. I'm skeptical in 2018, and I remain that same way today uh, about whether we're going to get this done or not. But I would highly encourage yourself, the administration, whoever is taking the lead on getting this, to make sure that you keep the council abreast of the ongoing progress. And uh, Mr. Chairman, to, to Chairman Griffin for the safety, I hope that we spend the next year staying on top of this. Um, because the amount of money that it's going to cost us to continue to rent something that we already owned is going to be ludicrous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman. Anything further on 767-2021? Hearing nothing, ordinance number 767-2021 stands approved. Thank you. That's all? You got more? Waiting for D.C. Patel. Oh, okay. Do you, do you want me to read 781, or do you want me to hold it for a little bit? You hold it for a little bit. Okay. Let's roll to uh, public works while we're waiting. Good afternoon. Victor, how are you? 
All right, so I'm going to begin with ordinance number 758 2021, Council Members Bishop and Kelly by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizes the Director of Public Works to apply for and accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Education for the 2022 Summer Food Service Program at Camp George Forbes, authorizing the purchase by requirement contract of breakfast and lunches and of food, food products, beverages, condiments, and paper products to implement the grant for the Division of Recreation Department of Public Works and authorizing the Director to contract with various nonprofit organizations for the implementation of the program. Director. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Council afternoon. President and other members of Council. We have before you our, our annual request to accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Education. This grant will allow us to uh, provide free meals to youth who participate in our summer camp program. Um, I have with me the Commissioner for the Division of Recreation, Sam Gissantana, and we welcome any questions that you might have regarding this piece of legislation. Thank you. Um, I'm familiar with the, um, with the legislation. Ordinance number 758-2021 has been heard and recommended for passage by the Committee on Municipal Services and Properties. I'd like to hear from Chairman Kevin Bishop on ordinance number 758, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we've heard this in uh, municipal services and properties, and we uh, we support this. Thank you. Is there any? Are there any further questions on ordinance number 758/2021? Seeing no questions, ordinance number 758/2021 stands approved. Thank you. Ordinance number 756. Thank you, Commissioner. 765/2021. Council members Griffin, Joe Jones, Harrison, Conwell, Bishop, and Kelly. By departmental request, an emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Works to enter into a license agreement with Case Western Reserve University to use a city, to, excuse me, to use and occupy city owned properties located within the Donebrook watershed to be used as outdoor learning environments for students in its Environmental Heroes program and to conduct water quality sampling and field investigations for an initial term of three years and automatically renewing year to year unless terminated by either party. Good afternoon, President and members of Council. I have with me Commissioner James DeRosa. He will introduce this piece and accept any questions that you might have. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have anything further on this? Um, Mr. Chairman, just that this is a great program to support STEM, uh, an after school, middle, and high school STEM student program at Case Western Reserve. And specifically, it would be access to Rockefeller Park, Ambler Park, Wade Park. Rockefeller Park Lagoon, and then the Wade Park Lagoon. And I can go into any more details anyone might need. Thank you. Uh, this has been heard and recommended for passage by Committee on Municipal Services and Properties. Chairman Kevin Bishop on 765. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we, uh, we vetted this this morning and uh, we support it. Thank you. And I'm just gonna go in order of sponsors uh, as they appear in front of me. Councilman Blaine Griffin on 765. Yes, Mr. Chair, I know that this is a very uh, active part of our ward, and I also um, serve on the Dome Brook Board, and this is something that's very critical to what we'd like to do, so please support this. Thank you, and I do not see Councilman Joe Jones or Councilman Harrison with us. Councilman Kevin Conwell? I support this legislation 100%, and I ask my colleagues to support it Thank also. You. Thank you. Further questions, comments on 765-2021? Seeing none, ordinance number 765 2021 stands approved. Thank you, Commissioner. Ordinance number 782 2021, Council Members Bishop and Kelly by departmental request, an emergency ordinance authorizing the purchase by one or more standard and requirement contracts for the purchase, lease, or lease with option to purchase of various on road vehicles, apparatus, and off road equipment, cabs, bodies, and accessories equipment, or other aftermarket items necessary to equip the vehicles authorized for their intended purpose, purposes, including vehicle rehabilitation, training, and inspection as needed for the Department of Port Control. Director? Council President and yeah. members of Council, this is a piece of legislation requesting approval to purchase equipment for use at the um, Department of Port Control in the amount of $220,000. I have with me Commissioner Jeff Brown, who is the Commissioner for the Division of Motor Vehicle Maintenance, and can um, answer any questions that you might have regarding this legislation. Thank you. Commissioner, anything further? 
Uh, no, this is just our, our yearly uh, capital request. Thank you. So the ordinance number 782 has been heard previously by the Committee on Municipal Services and Properties. I'd like to hear from the Chairman, Councilman Kevin Bishop, please. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, uh, we've heard this this morning and we also support this piece. Thank you. Further questions, comments on ordinance number 782-2021? So it's all I got. So if, when you're done, sorry. 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 Okay. Anything further on ordinance number 782? Seeing no further questions, ordinance number 782, 2021, stands approved. Ordinance number 864-2021, by Councilman Bishop and Kelly, by departmental request, and emergency orders authorizing Director of Public Works to enter into an amendment with two contract number CT 7013-PS 2020-60 with GT Environmental, Inc., to implement and stabilize accepted recommendations needed to improve efficiency, consistency, and reliability and reliable service delivery for, resident, for residential solid waste and recycling services for a period not to exceed two years. Good afternoon once again, Council President, members of Council. I have with me the Commissioner for the Division of Waste Collection, Terrell Pruitt, and Terrell Cole, who is the Deputy Chief of Operations. Uh, Commissioner Pruitt will um, speak a little bit about this piece, and uh, together, um, Commissioner Pruitt and Deputy Chief Cole will answer any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This piece will allow us to enter a contract for two years with GT Environmental Group uh, to continue with the, uh, the implementation of, uh, phase of our recycling and our waste collection improvement plan. Uh, this is uh, for two years, $94,600. Annually or for the two-year period? It's a total amount. Okay. It's not to exceed amount. Not to exceed. Okay, great. Any further, Terrell? Uh, not at this time, Chair. Thank you. Okay, Ordinance 864 has been heard today in Municipal Service and Properties. I'd like to hear, actually, that wasn't today, October 13th. I want to hear from uh, Councilman uh, Chairman Kevin Bishop, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we, uh, we vetted this this morning and uh, we, this we, we approved this. Thank you very much. Further questions, comments on Ordinance? One, one thing, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, did, did, uh, did you guys um, come up with the uh, amount of the first contract? That we had uh, with GT. I, I guess Councilman Casey had that question this morning. Uh, through the chair, we did. Uh, the previous contract was one hundred sixty-eight thousand four hundred dollars. Further questions, comments on eight sixty-four. Uh, Councilman Kerry McCormick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, chair to the director, this uh, extension of or whoever, whoever <laughs> throw the ball in the air. Um, for the contract, is this uh, to assist the city in implementing the preferred option of opt-in recycling program for the city? Uh, through the chair, it's, it's, for, a number, it's, it's for a number of uses. Uh, primarily, it's to help us as we work through these issues. It's not just specific recycling, but as we go through other issues, as we improve the division of waste, it allows us to uh, use some of their analytical um, abilities and capacity that we don't necessarily have in the division to think through some of these problems. Okay, so uh, Chair to the Director, uh, fair to say an added capacity to advise the city through the transition or implementation? Or through the Chair, yes. Okay, I'm just trying to get a better idea of how they're going to be functioning with the city government. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Further questions, comments? Councilman Brancatelli? Yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the questions that came up in the morning uh, session was also the authority to charge residents $50. Yes, through the chair, we're uh, re researching that. Okay. Uh, we took your, uh, your question seriously, and we're conducting research to make sure we do have the authority. Okay. Um, and uh, how, uh, you'll advise us? Yes, through the chair, we'll get back with you and to the body on our authority. Okay. That was a, I'm, and I'm, the question was... Mm -hmm. 
they, um, as we remove, start moving, removing containers in, in um, October, um, for those who need a second container, since they won't have two containers, the administration's saying they're going to charge residents $50 for another container. And I don't recall us authorizing that. Uh, through the chair, this, this practice has been in place for leasing the can since 2010, but we just want to make sure that uh, we took your question seriously and we'll do the research to see what authority we got legislatively to do this. It was leasing additional cans. Yes, at leasing one additional can. But we had two cans. We're taking one away, so we still we should have two cans then. Uh, uh, one additional black can for refuge. So it's a okay. leasing of one black refuge can. Okay. So um, I, we worked with the chairman. We're going to have a presentation on this because I, I'm going to recommend that we change that legislation that if that is in place because if people need two containers because we're no longer recycling at the same level we were before, um, that's going to create some hardships on families on the east side. And as we stated earlier um, today in the hearings, that the east side is incredibly underrepresented in the opt-in programs for lots of different reasons. But nonetheless, we're going to create um, undue hardships on the east side, um, and especially if we start charging $50 for someone to, that they're already paying for a service for. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions, comments on 864? Hearing on order number 864, 2021, stands approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terrell and Terrell. Going back to public safety, please. All right. DC Patel, welcome back. Thank you. Going, we're going to revert back to order number 781, 2021, Council Members Griffin Kelly by departmental request. An emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Safety to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Ohio Attorney General's Ohio Organized Crime Investigations Commission to investigate human trafficking, criminal activity, and authorize participation in eligible forfeiture sharing for the Division of Police Department of Public Safety for a term of one year and automatically renewed from year to year unless terminated by either party. D.C. Patel. Yes, yes uh, through the chair, to the, co to the committee, this uh, task force is organized by the Attorney General, and it's, well, oh, okay. Do that. Yeah. It is also uh, chaired by the Homeland Security Investigations Team, and it will allow us to have a force multiplier investigator on that task force. That investigator will follow up on any, not only sex trafficking, but labor trafficking, human trafficking cases in the city of Cleveland and in our area of operation. Having this investigator on in a task force allows us to draw on other resources, both state and at the federal level, and also allows us to not only further investigate cases which may be stuck in a district or in another unit, but which are fall under the realm of human trafficking. As we know, human trafficking is prevalent everywhere. It's a nationwide problem. There's a lot of initiatives coming down from the federal government, but we need these operators at the ground level to be able to channel those resources to investigate these cases. Great. Thank you. And this ordinance has been heard and recommended for approval. Uh, Chairman and Majority Leader Blaine Griffin. Yes, Mr. Chair, we uh, vetted this and we uh, support this legislation. Thank you. Further questions on 781-2021? Seeing none, ordinance number 781-2021 stands approved. Ordinance number 866, 2021, Council Members Griffin and Kelly by departmental request, an emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from the United States Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, and the FY21 Port Security Grant Program and authorizing the purchase by one or more contracts of one police boat and associated equipment for the Division of Police Department of Public Safety. D.C. Patel. Patel. Yeah. Through the chair, to the committee, uh, this uh, uh, legislation will allow us to purchase an additional boat for the Public Safety Marine Patrol Team. The City of Cleveland purchased a uh, boat in 2009-2010 to form the Public Safety Marine Patrol Team, which we did in partnership with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, we were also part of the Northern Border Initiative. As we know, uh, water activity not only on the river, but on the lakefront has increased in the City of Cleveland. Also, um, we have a lot of special events that are water-related. So enforcement of um, ordinances on the river and on the lake fall to the city of Cleveland. Very strong partnerships with our other water and borne entities, but very important for us to have an additional platform uh, to be able to conduct these, these efforts. Thank you. Okay. And ordinance number 866 has been heard previously and recommended for passage. 
Uh, Chairman Blaine Griffin on ordinance number 866. Yes, Mr. yes, Mr. Chairman, it's been fully vetted. We support this piece of legislation. Thank you. Further questions, comments on 866-2021, Councilman? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Chair to the um, Commissioner, Chief, Director, I'm, I'm sorry. Deputy Chief. Deputy, Deputy Chief, yes, there yeah. it is. Um, this, um, how will this impact the, I, I'm explicitly concerned about river safety. So. Uh, is this boat, is it planned to be deployed along the Cuyahoga mouth of the river? As you're aware, you know, we've got some challenges. It's great that we've got booming recreation. We want to support that, but uh, ensuring that the recreation and the commerce plays safely is critically important. So can you speak to the division's, you know, activities along the river, but also, you know, cooperation with other agencies? Uh, through the chair, through the councilman, the, uh, we are part of the Cuyahoga River Safety Task Force. And on that task force, we, dis uh, we discuss our strategies not only for commerce, but for obviously recreation on the river, and not, not to mention the enforcement of things going on at the mouth of the river, by the flats, et cetera. So uh, this is a concerted effort between us, um, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the Coast Guard, the Sheriff's Office, Metro Parks, um, and obviously the commercial community. So we are par partnered with them, we do meet with them, and um, I wanna respond to their concerns. But one of the biggest concerns is our lack of presence on the water. So having this platform will certainly allow us to do that. Okay. So this um, chair to the deputy chief would be river and lakefront coverage. Is that accurate? <coughs> Through the chair to the councilman. Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Councilman. Further questions, comments on 866-2021. Order number 866-2021 stands approved. Please sign. Uh, finally, thank you very much. Finally, uh, I have a resolution to be considered by uh, the council, and it is under suspension. It is resolution 926, 2021, council members Kelly and Griffin. An emergency resolution repealing resolution number 893, 2021, adopted October 11th, 2021. The purpose of this is an appointment to the um, uh, review board, the police review board. Um, has a conflict that will prevent this person from taking that seat. So we have to get somebody else quickly. Without objection? Yeah. Explain to me what this is. Yes. So um, last week we had approved um, resolution 893. Um, and what this does, it repeals that because that was putting, that was, um, appointing a member to the, um, to the CPC. This person has a conflict and can't be seated, so we have to repeal this and go and get somebody in quickly. I follow, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If there are no further questions, comments, resolution 926, 2021 will be considered by the full council this afternoon. Thank you all very much. We are adjourned, see everybody at seven. Hey, Kev, I have a quick question for you, a quick question for you.